Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich. Here we have a Rich TV Live with two very special guests, the executive chairman and founder, Vince Sirachi of MindHub and the CEO, Arnaud Star Busman. How are you gentlemen doing today? Very good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having us today, Rich. <clears throat> my Thank pleasure. You, Rich. Thanks for having us. Hey, my pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. So my first question is, MindHub is an enterprise platform that digitizes and streamlines manual and paper-based processes connecting the entire metals and mining supply chain. Can you tell us a little bit more about the company? Yeah, sure, Rich. Uh, so MindHub was founded in 2018 in, in Vancouver. Uh, it was formed around an idea of how emerging blockchain technology could, could help drive digitalization of uh, uh, the archaic processes in mining and metal supply chain. So um, the company didn't do this alone. So 2018 was really about forming a syndicate of companies around, a syndicate of, uh, of uh, companies around the mine up to help design, develop, validate the products. That's some, some large companies like Wheat and Precious, Gold Corp, ING Bank. And take it to from an idea to a concept. Um, and also in 2018, we realized the initial funding for the for the project. 2019 was about developing the first release, which we did with IBM um, USA, and we started engagement with key future partners like BHP. 2020 was really around road testing the platform, um, testing the value proposition, refining it, learning, uh, improving the UX. And then from there, taking to a commercial release at the end of 2020. Some of the work that we've done there uh, as, as part of it was in the press, uh, the work that we've done with BHP, Vale, and Bau. Um, 2021, so this year has really around, been around hardening the core platform, uh, starting onboarding our initial customers, and then building out commercial teams, especially in Asia. Uh, MindUp is already present globally, uh, not just Vancouver. We've got... I'm based in Europe, but we have teams in London, in the Netherlands, and we have uh, boots on the ground in key complex markets like China and Japan. Wow, you guys seem to be really busy. I didn't realize you guys were so global already. How does MindHub's technology benefit businesses across the trade ecosystem? In various ways, and there's quite a lot of players, uh, probably for people who don't do commodity supply chain transactions on a daily basis. It's a bit of an explanation of what, what problems we're solving. So um, if you look at these supply chains from a mining supply chains, taking uh, a piece of iron ore into a finished product uh, in, in your house, for instance, these supply chains, they consist of a whole series of high value transactions between sellers and buyers, supported by a variety of service and logistics providers. Think inspectors, banks, shipping agents, carriers, insurance companies, ports, etc. Transaction values range between one to thirty million dollars uh, US dollars. Now there was some analysis done and if you look at moving a container from Africa to the Netherlands, which should at first sight seem straightforward, it actually involves like 20 parties. 100 people and 200 interactions between those people. And what they do, they usually send each other paper, emails, messages, et cetera, with, with information regarding the shipments, usually the same information in different formats. And they're chasing each other to get updates on status and location and things like that. It's very manual, labor intensive, lots of reconciliations, lots of errors. It causes delays that affect customer service, uh, but they also consume working capital, sometimes up to 30% of the time of a transaction is wasted for a um, container sitting idle waiting for paper. And this is just one step of the journey, one shipment. The supply chains are long with lots of steps. It's been estimated that this, uh, this way of working and this paper-based nature really loses around five to 10% of the value of the trade of goods on an annual basis due to the friction of paper and document-based processes. We take a $1.8 trillion industry like mining and metal supply chains. That's a $150 billion pain point. Just, just that, right? And that's one of the pain points we're solving. So we take the friction from supply chain activities by going digital and providing a shared collaborative space where information is updated and shared in real time. Uh, no more multiple versions of the truth that need to be reconciled. No more guesswork. 
where goods are and, and chasing people, everybody's on the same page all the time. That helps us to streamline operations for our customers and users. It cuts out a lot of the stress. It takes away wasted effort on reconciliation. It reduces timelines for transactions and reduces errors. So everybody benefits really in these transactions. Very good. Sounds like the you other- guys have been putting a lot of time and effort into coming up with some solutions to everyday problems. Why did MineHub decide to enter the public markets now? That decision was based on multiple fronts. And, you know, it's, it's an exciting time with tech stocks and the digitizing of everything right now. Um, you know, that uh, the speed and the velocity of this movement was driven by COVID, obviously, as people were forced to work from home and processes that required, um, you know, personal interactions um, needed to be completed remotely. Um, you know, as Arnoud just described, you know, this, this uh, industry in particular, very, very um, manual, paper-based, people-based processes. Um, so, you know, kind of capturing this, um, this new era of, uh, of digitizing everything, um, which is exciting in the markets right now. And we're also at, uh, you know, in a, in a phase of um, our growth cycle where we're poised to make significant strides. Um, and we think the pu- public markets um, will find that exciting and shareholders will be rewarded in this public environment um, for this next phase of our um, uh, growth cycle. And then, you know, when you're public, you get um, it's greater access to capital. Um, you know, we just did a, a very large, significant uh, financing to go public. Um, so we're, we are definitely cashed up, but now, you know, for additional opportunities to expand our business and, you know, potentially if we identify a creative, um, you know, uh, m and opportunities, um, it's good to be public. Um, so those are the reasons we chose to be public now. Very good. And we were very happy that you're public because our community loves identifying undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies that have an opportunity to explode. And that's why we love doing these interviews to get to know people behind the deals. Now, MineHub is already working with the largest mining companies in the world, as well as massive financial institutions and tech companies. Can you tell us more about those collaborations? Yeah. And, you know, this is an important point because when when the, the idea or the concept of starting MineHub um, came up and and solving these um, you know these problems um, in the industry, or you know really just kind of um, moving. You know, I come from the resource space and 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 the mining and metals industry, and you know that industry's always been a big laggard with respect to adopting technology. Um, probably one of the worst ones in the world, and. When, when this concept came up of uh, introducing this technology, and, and it, was, it was back in the day when, when blockchain be, kind of started becoming a household word, word because of cryptos, and other industries were starting to adopt it, um, you know, it, it, we were building, we wanted to make sure we were building something that industry wanted, not, not what we were, not, you know, something we were guessing at, what, what, what do we think they need. And so MineUp was started with really putting together a consortium of industry players, like uh, the corner points of industry. And that started with um, Gold Corp and Wheat and Precious Metals and ING Bank, um, you know, the corner points of these supply chains. And really that acted as a focus group. We, they, they along with IBM, when we, we announced um, and signed a strategic development um, um, agreement with IBM, and we all sat around a table and, you know, they, they, it was an intellectual kind of dump of, you know, how each of these corner points of industry saw a platform like this helping their business, making it more efficient as something that they would want to use. And that's how this concept started three years ago. And then, you know, that progressed and that morphed into additional groups like them. And, you know, our new dimension, you know, we, there's public announcements out there with the BHPs of the world and the ballets of the world. And they continued that process with us as we pivoted into different markets and, and uh, started you know, addressing additional opportunities for the company. You know, they kind of, um, uh, if you will, uh, continued to collude with us and, and, and identify, um, I guess, not only niche opportunities within each of these organizations, um, you know, uh, pain points that you know, we could solve for them, but you know, stuff that would also relate to and be um, used by the greater industry itself. And, and those collaborations continued and, and we got to where we are today, where we've got a, a, you know, convert, a commercial version of the platform launched. Um, but I think the more exciting part of that too is that those collaborations are just gonna continue and they're going to um, 
continue from a number of perspectives where you know we you'll also see us doing um, joint venture type projects with a lot of um, leaders within industry around specific applications that will be put on the platform um, so it'll continue to kind of you know um, enhance and increase um, the opportunities within the platform itself as we continue to work with industry that sounds incredible there's some big names you're mentioning there like IBM and BHP can you tell us a little bit more about your ESG carbon tracking solution and how it will benefit the industry? Sure, I'll, I'll take that one. So uh, I don't think it's a surprise that ESG compliance and uh, uh, basically accounting and reporting on emissions, they're big themes for corporates now, and especially in supply chains, especially in mining and metals. And it's expensive for companies to comply with this. And let me, let me give you two examples. So the first one is, uh, for instance, in Europe, car companies that sell EVs, they, they need to prove the ESU footprint of the full upstream supply chain of the battery that's in the EV, in the electric vehicle. So they need to make sure there's no uh, child labor or slavery involved in mind the cobalt, but also account for the emissions that we put in the atmosphere during the, uh, the mining, the, uh, the shipping and the production processes. Uh, how are they going to prove this? They, they need to have access to all the parties that have been involved in getting it from the mine into that battery in the car in the, in the dealer showroom. Um, that's a lot of information they need to gather from lots of parts that they don't even know. Um, another example is carbon emissions accounting. More and more companies, they, they really need to account and report on not just their own carbon emissions, but also those of their customers and suppliers as they're involved in processing or uh, shipping the materials they buy and sell. So for instance, if a mining company sells iron ore to a steel mill, that mining company needs to account and report on how many emissions their customer, the mill, produced while processing the specific amount of iron ore that they bought from the mining company, and also how many emissions the vessel produced while carrying the iron ore from the load port to this port. These are so-called scope three emissions. Now, if you Think about it. Some of these companies have tens of thousands of customers and suppliers. Accounting for all that is a massive undertaking, pretty much impossible. Yeah. And then keeping track of improvements or changes that suppliers and customers make, changing the intensity, etc. It's it's just a, a, a conundrum of data that that needs to be uh, captured every day and uh, analyzed and reported on. So. So we are building a solution for both of those challenges. Uh, we are enabling companies to help them prove, uh, get independent certification, uh, but also verify compliance with ESG requirements in their supply chains uh, up and downstream. But we also help companies to automate the, uh, the capture, the accounting, the auditing, and the reporting of the scope free emissions um, based as, a, as an early course of business. And that's, we do that at transaction level. So it's, it's, it's a massive headache, a big paracetamol really to, re, to, to, um, to address that. And uh, this is not just solving complex problems for our users that are expensive. It also directly contributes to our kids and grandkids' future by promoting sustainable supply chains and carbon neutrality. What in other industries and sectors can MineHub's core technology be used in? And what space does the company plan to target next? So the, the problems and the pain points that we're solving, they are um, commodity agnostic. So our platform is commodity and product agnostic. We've got a very clear focus on mining and metal supply chains because it's an extremely important, critical, uh, increasingly critical part of the global industry and our uh, the climate change uh, ambitions that all the countries have. But, um, but we can use mine up directly without any change for any other bulk shipped commodities or container shipped products. In theory, we can enter any market, but uh, like most companies, we've got limited resources and we need to focus and prioritize them, right? So a logical next step for us are those products that our users, our customers are already involved in. So for mining companies, this means looking at their upstream supply chain. Uh, it's equipment that's being shipped to them, spare parts, tires, explosives, chemicals, fuel, etc. Um, but also for some of the traders that we work with that are active in other commodities like coffee or petro petroleum products. We basically will go, uh, we'll keep our focus on mining and metals, but we will go uh, now where our customers and users want us to go or where we come across a really uh, incredible opportunity and we jump straight in. 
Fantastic. What are some of your major milestones for the company this year? And what has been one of your most significant accomplishments for the company since it was founded in 2018? So for us this year, really, I mean, we've executed documentation with several large industry participants for a, a startup company to um, basically uh, engage with, with some of the biggest parties in one of the most conservative industries in the, on the planet. I think is a, is a major achievement and we're very proud of that, right? So it means that we've got something uh, that is of value and it means that it's something that can scale into a, a future digital infrastructure. We, cybersecurity is uh, uh, a foremost attention for us. So we invested instantly in achieving industry leading uh, cybersecurity compliance, uh, evidenced by SOC 2 type, uh, type one assessment that we had and we'll follow that with the type two assessment later in the year. We run some live transactions, including in trade finance. Um, and of course, the listing on the TSX is a, is, a, is a key milestone. But if I if I look back over those years, what's where, what were really defining moments, it's um, being able to work with those large companies and small companies to build this commercial grade platform. And the really defining moment was when we, uh, when we did the first blockchain-based iron ore trade between BHP and China Baowu uh, in 2020, respectively the largest mining company and the largest steel producer on the planet uh, in the midst of COVID, in, in the midst of the pandemic. And um, that was a, a really defining moment for, for us, for the team and for the company. Congratulations on all your success thus far. The MineHub team brings an array of experience to the company. Can you tell us a little bit more about your leadership team and why these key members were chosen? Absolutely. I mean, I'm very proud of the team that we've assembled around us. So the, the mission we're on is really not simple. Uh, otherwise, it would have been done before. Bar barrier to entry is high. It's not just, and not just financial. We spent a significant amount of money uh, getting here, but it requires a combination of special skills and experience in technology, industry, finance, law, product management, execution, digital transformation. And then we need extensive industry networks, contacts to be able to access uh, these large companies and players at the right level, having uh, bring a certain credibility and trust to the, uh, to the engagement being able to operate and collaborate in many different cultures, whether it's corporate cultures, large ones, small ones, but of course, countries like, uh, like China and Japan, absolutely critical markets that work very differently from what we're used to. And our team combines all the skills and experience um, uh, and we needed to execute. So if I look at the management team, aside from my, uh, myself and Vince here on, uh, today, um, our CEO, COO, Matthias, he's got extensive experience in digital transformation, execution. Hugh Harvard thompson he's a born entrepreneur, having co-founded the first publicly traded enterprise blockchain company in Canada, BTL Group. Mariana, she has extensive experience in UX and product management. Echo uh, spent most of her career in ferrous metals in mainland China, based in Shanghai. She brings her domestic network and her market experience to the table and so forth. And if I look at a board, I just call out a few. We have got David Garofalo, uh, CEO for Gold Corp uh, for a long time, which merged with Newmont uh, last year. And uh, or two years ago, we have Heike uh, Tool coming from Anglo uh, American. She was in the leadership team of the company there, looking after digital transformation as well as India and China. So we've got a lot of maturity and experience in, in our team, management team, uh, but we also got fantastic. Uh, uh, team members to execute on that um, uh, with us. Sounds like you have a great team that you put together. What should investors look out for from MineHub in the coming months? We are working, uh, we're firing on all cylinders, especially since the financing, and we've got uh, a lot of work on. So I expect some of that to uh, come out in the press, uh, work we're doing with large customers uh, and uh, that, that's still under wraps. Um, similarly, we are uh, launching applications over the next three months, and we'll announce it when they. Our launch and when they get taken into use with, with feedback from the initial use. Um, we have a, a quite a strong list of partnerships, key partnerships that we are that we have developed over the years and that we will sign with and uh, we'll give some visibility on that. Um, and finally, there's uh, it's conference season now, uh, there's continuous events uh, uh, in the industry, digital transformation, 
Uh, digitalization of mining and metal supply chains is a very hot topic. And we will be attending and speaking at a variety of these. Wow. Finally, we've got investors all over the world that are looking for companies like yours that are undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed, and are relatively new. How can those investors get in touch with you or the company if they have any questions or they're interested in potentially investing? Yeah, so I think I think our website is uh, pretty accessible everywhere. Mineup.com. We have a uh, investors page that gives good information. And the, a movie we made uh, about what we're doing got good reviews, also from industry. Uh, we've got an investor deck there. Uh, we've got a book a demo uh, button uh, to get a demo or get more information. Uh, we've got a LinkedIn channel. Uh, but you can always uh, email as well, of course. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today, gentlemen. I must remind everyone that is watching that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I do believe this is a company that is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Put it on your watch list, put it on your radar, and thank you for watching everybody today. And I must also thank the executive chairman and founder, Vince Saracci, for joining us today. And the CEO, Arnold Star Busman. Thank you for joining us today, gentlemen. Thanks for having us, Rich. Thank you, Rich. Always a pleasure. Told you guys, if you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. And have a nice day. Oh,